thanks for coming. I'm Lisa Pullman, Executive Director of the Natural Resources Council of Maine, and I'm here with three of our members who will say a few words after me. Today, we are calling on Governor LePage to stop spending Maine taxpayer money on his smear campaign against the Natural Resources Council of Maine. Yes, it's a smear campaign. Over the past two months, the governor has produced and publicly displayed a wanted poster about NRCM, attacked us by name in dozens of speeches and radio interviews, and now this week sent dozens of NRCM members a harassment letter about NRCM. The Natural Resources Council of Maine was founded in 1959 to protect Maine's waters, air, forests, and wildlife. We were founded by Maine people. And after working for 57 years in Maine, we can say with total confidence that Governor LePage is the most anti-environment governor in our history. The governor is angry because his attacks on the environment have been broadly rejected through bipartisan vote here at the State House. That's what happens when his proposals are so out of step with the majority of Maine people. And now it appears that the governor has taken the unprecedented step of directing public employees to hunt down the names and addresses of NRCM members so that he can send harassment letters to their homes. This has got to stop. The governor should not be using Maine taxpayer money for his vendetta against NRCM. And that's why today we are sending a freedom of access letter to the governor's chief counsel requesting copies of all documents in possession of the office of the governor that mention NRCM. We want to see all the information about involvement of the governor's staff and the use of taxpayer money to research NRCM's membership track down home addresses of NRCM members and produce and mail a letter to them. Today we are also going to save Governor LePage some time and effort by sharing his letter, the one I got at home, with all of NRCM's 16,000 members and supporters. This includes Mainers who live in 488 cities and towns across Maine. That's one way we can save taxpayers some postage costs and ensure that all of our members and the public at large can see how the governor is wasting his time and their money. Last week, the governor's office was scouring the internet for the addresses of NRCM members and supporters so he could send them a harassment letter, but next week, he could be sending similar letters to members of any organization that disagrees with his policies. Where does this stop? This seems like something Senator Joseph McCarthy would have done in the 1950s, not a governor of Maine in 2016. Over the past two months, the governor has mentioned NRCM by name at least 40 times in more than a dozen speeches, interviews, and town hall meetings. This could be a record. Clearly, we have gotten under the governor's skin. His response is to fixate on blaming us while denying everything that has gone wrong under his watch as governor and deflect blame away from himself. He relishes creating enemies and attacking those who disagree with him, but this is no way to govern. Don't mistake the real message here. The governor is attacking Maine's environment, pure and simple. Since elected in 2010, the governor has tried to weaken the laws and safeguards that protect Maine's lakes, waterways, forests, and wildlife. But Maine people don't support his anti-environment agenda, and a bipartisan majority of Maine's lawmakers has consistently voted it down. The governor is wrong, and Maine people are right. A healthy environment is the very foundation of our economy. They go hand in hand. The protections that Maine people have put in place for the environment help contribute billions of dollars and tens of thousands of jobs to the Maine economy year after year. The governor is out of touch and out of date in thinking we need to roll back environmental laws to create jobs. So NRCM will continue to fight against the governor's radical anti-environment agenda, confident that we represent the overwhelming view of Maine people who love the nature of Maine and understand how important it is to our economy and way of life. And with that, I'd like to in, uh, introduce Marsha and Jake Plant, who also got a letter. And Jake would like to say a few words. All right, thank you, Lisa. And 
I, I'm here to represent some of the other donors that received the letter. And I'd like to thank NRCM that's doing a tremendous job in representing the environmental interests of the state of Maine. And with our motto of uh, the way life should be, environmental protection is a critical part of, of what we uh, brand Maine to be for uh, visitors and people who live here as well. So it's critical to the, to the economy. So you can imagine the surprise I had when I walked out to my mailbox and found the letter. Uh, and it, it's disturbing in a couple of different ways. First, it, uh, it's inappropriate, as Lisa mentioned. Um, you know, it's, it's, you wonder who in the state ran down our addresses and, and, uh, and, and mailed the letter and put the time into it that they did. So it's disturbing from the, from the standpoint of taxpayer funding. Uh, but it's also disturbing in terms of the tone of the letter. It's, there's an there's a edge of intimidation and uh, bullying, uh, and, uh, and, and that's the type of tone that I think is um, reducing the civility in our discourse today. So it's, the tone is disturbing. Um, I would say, you know, I thought for a moment that the governor had, uh, had mentioned his interest in serving for a Trump camp in a Trump administration, and I thought maybe this was his audition for that position. But uh, let me just say that uh, because of the tone, uh, I think it's important to remember that reasonable people can disagree on environmental issues. I happen to believe that the environment adds jobs and that environmental protection can be balanced with economic development. And I think that's true on the park uh, that's being proposed and on other issues as well. But again, let me thank NRCM for the good work they do on the environment. And, uh, and hopefully this type of letter uh, won't arrive in my mailbox again. And now I'd like to introduce Norton Lamb, or Buzz. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa, and good morning. I'm Buzz Lamb. My family goes back five generations in both Somerset and Cumberland counties. I grew up in Falmouth on the banks of a very polluted Presumpscot River. I now live in New Gloucester and own camps on Lobster Lake in the Upper West Branch in Northern Maine. I'm a proud member of NRCM, and all this organization has done to help protect what makes Maine a special place. I retired from a 41-year business career where I've worked closely with dozens of Maine shoe, textile, and woods products manufactured. I now actively work my farm and woodlots while spending as much time in the North Woods as I can. I was surprised and troubled to receive a letter from Governor LePage last week. The sole purpose of this letter was to pick a fight, foster divisiveness, mischaracterize NRCM's work, and provide in an, an inaccurate assessment of the cause and effect relationships affecting Maine businesses. This type of communication from the governor is very counterproductive. NRCM has no vote and therefore blocks nothing. The organization does research, education, and advocacy. It promotes sound stewardship of our natural resources. It helps Maine citizens knowledgeably, knowledge, knowledgeably engaging in the policy-making process. As a person with a science background who has independently studied many of these issues, I am confident NRCM provides accurate and constructive input to the policy-making process. As a businessman who has experienced the impacts of globalization, automation, and shifts in consumer behavior, I know that good stewardship of our natural resources will provide economic opportunity, avoid the high costs of the remediation, and keep Maine a great place to live and work for generations to come. I do not understand why Maine's governor is so hostile to the protection of Maine's natural resources and why he has become so fixated on attacking the leading Maine organization working to protect our environment. It makes no sense. Thank you. And with that, we would be happy to entertain any questions here at the dais or individually afterwards. I think the very, first of all, the very fact that he has tracked down NRCM members' home addresses and sent them a letter at all is harassing. And um, I think that the tone of the letter, as as Jake so aptly put, is definitely uh, got an air of uh, intimidation and uh, 
should we say, no goodwill. Like all, like all private nonprofit organizations, we do not publicly list uh, the addresses of our um, members. So we figure the only place they could have gotten it is we list some of our members on the NRCM calendar, which also serves as our annual report. And you can see the list there and all kinds of wonderful tidbits about the protection of Maine, including the fact that this Saturday is Nature National Trails Day, in case you were wondering. How many people specifically do you know have received letters? And I'll also ask, do you, can you give us a rough idea of, since the governor's commented previously about out-of-state donors, what portion of your members or donors are in-state versus out-of-state? I would say that the vast majority of our members, uh, well over three quarters, are full-time Maine residents. And uh, as for the number of people that we've heard from, so far, I think we've actually gotten emails from approximately um, a quarter of who we think this letter may have gone to. So say it went to approximately 200 people. We've already heard from, well, no more than that. We've probably heard from, yeah, I would say probably 50 people so far. Actually, uh, I wasn't anticipating something this personal to our members, and that really was the line crosser for us, is that, you know, We've got to stand up for the hundreds and thousands of people who support NRCM and say this has got to stop. Oh, um, our, our membership dues begin at $35 for a household. And, uh, and people, some people give us more than that annually. We have hundreds of people who've been giving to us for 20 years or more. And, um, we are completely supported by the charitable contributions of our members and a small group of uh, foundations who support uh, giving in Maine.